I'd like to give you a particular tool that's gleaned from the research psychology literature. Welcome to Brian and Paul. I am Brian, and I'm continuing the discussion about habits. And today I'd like to talk about one of the tools that I've used, basing this off of Andrew Huberman and his amazing podcast video discussing habits and of how it has helped me and why I think it will more importantly help you in terms of what are some of the positive habits you want to start so that you can make progress in your life in achieving your goals. I should mention that I learned about this from an excellent review article that's available online. It's called Psychology of Habit. The authors are Wendy Wood and Dennis Runger. This is published in Annual Review of Psychology. Here I'm more or less paraphrasing from them, so I wanna be clear that uh, these are their words, not mine. They're talking about the various ways that habits form in the nervous system. And they mention with each repetition of a habit, small changes occur in the cognitive and neural mechanisms associated with procedural memory. So I just wanna talk for a second about what procedural memory is. In the neuroscience of memory, we distinguish between what's called episodic memory and procedural memory. Episodic memory is a recall of a particular set of events that happened, whereas procedural memory is holding in mind the specific sequence of things that need to happen in order for a particular outcome to occur. So think of it like a recipe or a protocol, or if for sake of exercise, it's like sets and reps or a particular course that you're going to run or cycle or the number of laps you're going to swim and how you're going to perform it. It's very clear that for anyone trying to adopt new habits, getting into the mindset of procedural memory is very useful for overcoming that barrier that we call limbic friction. How do you do that? Well, a simple visualization exercise, or it doesn't even have to be done eyes closed. You know, oftentimes we hear visualization exercise, you think about sitting in the lotus position, eyes closed, and you know, trying really hard to visualize something. It doesn't need to be anything like that. It can simply be, if you are deciding to adopt a new habit, to just think about the very specific sequence of steps that's required to execute that habit. And I'll use a trivial example, but this could be applied to anything. Let's say I want to get into the habit of making myself or someone else in my household a cup of espresso every morning. I would actually think through each of those steps, walk into the kitchen, turn on the espresso machine, draw the espresso, walking through each of those steps from start to finish. It turns out just that simple mental exercise done once can shift people toward a much higher likelihood of performing that habit regularly, not just the first time, but as they continue out into the days and weeks that follow. So that's remarkable to me. And the literature is really robust. Just one mental exercise of thinking through what are the sequence of steps required in order to perform this habit from start to finish can shift the likelihood of being able to perform that habit from unlikely or moderately likely to very likely over time. And that's because it pulls from this process that involves our hippocampus and our neocortex and other areas of our brain and nervous system that engage in procedural memory. It shifts the brain towards a, a mindset, if you will, uh, it's more of a neural circuit set, it would be more accurate, but a mindset slash neural circuit set of doing things in a particular sequence, which allows that limbic friction to come down and increases the likelihood that we're going to perform that thing. Simple tool, but very powerful tool, according to the psychology literature. And actually the cellular and molecular mechanisms that underlie that sort of procedural memory stepping through phenomenon are known. In this article I mentioned, they talk about so-called Hebbian learning. Donald Hebb was a psychologist uh, in Canada and birthed this field that has now lasted, gosh, um, more than 50 years and is still very strong in neuroscience and psychology of Hebbian learning. Hebbian learning is when particular neurons are coactive, meaning when they fire together, they tend to strengthen their connections with one another. And it has a number of different underlying cellular and molecular features that we don't have to go into in detail. But for those of you that wanna know, I know some of you are hungry for a little bit more neuroscience. Uh, this involves things like NMDA receptors, N-methyl D aspartate receptors. NMDA receptors are really important, I think, for everyone to understand. So I'll just tell you a little bit about them. These are receptors that are on the neuron surface and normally they don't contribute much to the activity of those neurons. Those neurons are perfectly capable of doing their thing without activation of this NMDA receptor. But when a neuron gets a very strong input, a strong stimulus, that NMDA receptor 
triggers a number of mechanisms that recruit to the surface of the neuron more other receptors. In other words, it makes that neuron more responsive to input in the future such that it doesn't require so much input. In other words, it takes a neuron that is very unlikely to fire and makes it more likely to fire. So this procedural stepping through of the steps of the recipe or the series of action steps that are involved in sitting down to study and writing for an hour or generating exercise, whatever it is, the habit that you're trying to learn, when you're doing that exercise, it's not as if your nervous system thinks you're actually performing the behavior. Your nervous system isn't stupid. It's actually a lot smarter than that. It knows the difference between a thought and an action. But when you do that, it sets in motion the same neurons that are going to be required for the execution of that habit. And so when you actually show up to perform that habit, it's as if the dominoes fall more easily. It's, it's a um, lower threshold, as we say, in order to get the habit to perform. So heavy in learning, NMDA receptors, all that um, nuts and bolts stuff are really the guts of the mechanisms of how this works. But for those of you that just want to be more habitual about certain things, be able to perform certain things more reflexively that you would like in your life, simply take the time, do it once, maybe twice, and just sit down close your eyes if you like, and just step through the procedure of what it's going to take in order to perform that habit. The psychology literature, as I mentioned, and also the neuroscience literature strongly supports the fact that it is going to make it far easier for you to adopt and maintain that habit. And if you are somebody who used to perform a habit and you don't understand why you dropped it and you're frustrated with yourself and you're trying to figure out how you can get back into that habit, well, by all means, lean right back into that habit. But if you're having trouble doing that, also, just use the procedural memory exercise in order to shift your nervous system toward a higher likelihood that you will return to that habit. Just the same way I described for trying to initiate a new habit. I appreciate the fact that Andrew Huberman is going into such detail about why this is an effective strategy and not just simply a visualization exercise, yet also indicating what is the science behind it and discussing that it is a longer time frame or a shorter time frame, depending on the limbic friction. That idea that if we are running into a certain amount of resistance to starting a habit, why is that and what we can do? And using this step of visualizing all of the steps that we need to take, I found to be an effective tool. Now, I use this simply for meditation. So meditation is one of the habits that I'm working on developing. It was on my previous action tracker checklist that I discussed in the previous episode. And the reason I'm talking about this is because I found that doing this the night before I started thinking about my meditation. And I walked through all the steps and it's a relatively simple exercise because there's not a whole lot of steps that I needed to walk through, but I imagined how I was setting up where I was going to meditate, what I would be doing, what were the steps ahead of time. And the next morning when I got up, my mind didn't feel like it needed to think about what it was that I needed to accomplish or wanted to accomplish to start this task or to start this habit. I highly encourage you to do this. This is a way for me to simplify and break down into smaller chunks for those of you that don't want to spend 90 minutes to two and a half hours reviewing or listening to a podcast, some of the key elements that I'm finding good success with as I'm breaking from a checkbox mentality into creating and formulating sustainable habits that allow me to continue to grow and progress. And I truly think will help you to continue to grow and progress as you're working towards achieving your goals. Thank you for watching. If you've liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel, providing any comments about your habits and what you're working on or challenges you're facing. We definitely appreciate it. Have a fabulous day.